Welcome to our 2021 iMovie tutorial video. So in this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to create videos for YouTube. Basically the step-by-step -step process that I went through to create this video that we published on our channel a couple weeks ago. I don't edit all the videos on this channel. My colleague Diego does most of the editing with Premiere Pro, but I wanted to create this tutorial and go through some of the editing myself to show you if you open up iMovie, walk through this tutorial, you should be able to create videos, edit them, and get them up on YouTube. iMovie is one of the easier softwares to use Use. It's very intuitive. It's not the most advanced software. So as you're getting better and better editing videos, you may run into different roadblocks to say, hey, I want to do this or that and can't quite find the way to do it with an iMovie. So I will be creating other tutorial videos in the future using DaVinci Resolve and others. And when those are ready, I'll link to them up above. But why don't we hop on the computer and I'll walk you through step-by-step -step basically what I did creating the video that I showed you earlier using iMovie. So this is basically what it's going to look like when you open up iMovie. If it's the very first time, you're only going to have this little create box. You're not going to have your previous projects. So you can click create new here or if you go up to file you can create a new movie trailer or a bonus tip is if you want to edit vertical videos it's not very easy to find in here but if you create a new app preview that's essentially a way for you to edit vertical videos if it's for Instagram stories or YouTube shorts or whatever it is you can edit that with a new app preview. But that's not for today's video we're just going to create a new video and then click on movie. And then so once you open up a new project like I just did, it gave it a name, My Movie 3. And this is essentially what the different screens are. So you have media. So this could be images, videos, audio clips, things like that that you'll see here. You'll have the play screen. And then this is where you do a lot of the editing. So what I usually end up doing is, you know, you can obviously open up all of your files by clicking here. What I'll usually end up doing is just opening up the folder that has my videos. So to tell you a little bit about my recording process, I'm not always the best at talking to a camera. Sometimes I have to repeat myself and do takes several times before I have something that I can actually use. And so what I'll do is record a tip at a time in separate clips. So I may have 10 clips for tip one and then move on to the next clip. And then what I'll do is go through all those and find the ones that are at least decent that I either want to send to Diego for him to edit or that I want to import here within iMovie and then go through to figure out, hey, which are the best ones? Do I have to combine different things to say everything that I want to? But basically what I'll do is, so I have like, I put all the clips here. Sometimes I have bloopers, the ones that are complete no's, and then the yeses. So I'm not gonna go through and edit an entire video for this right now, but basically I can say, hey, these eight clips, I can drag them into the, the project folder as I have right here. And then so what I could essentially do to go through these to figure out which ones I wanna use, you can do it a couple of different ways. So as you're putting something together on, on a timeline, it's essentially what's down here. I haven't added anything to the timeline yet. I could go through these clips all right here and one way to do it, I, I can hit control and then mouse click and then I can either favorite this or I can reject this one, favorite this one you know, reject this one. And I so I could go through all the clips and just let them play up above like so. Another thing is if you hit the space bar, it'll start to play. And if you hit the space bar again, it'll pause it. And so I could just go through and let all of these play right now if I wanted to and select the clips. If I wanted to, I could also highlight all of these and just drag them down to the timeline like so. I don't want to do that, so let's delete those. But there's a couple of different ways, and it's kind of trial and error to figure out what is the quickest, easiest way for you to go through all the clips to figure out which ones are going to be included in the video and which ones you don't want to include. So let's say I like this clip, but I don't want the whole 23 and a half seconds. What I can do is I could start here. I could hit the space bar. It'll start playing. If I hit I, it'll say this is the in point, and if I hit O, this is the out point. And then I could hit space bar and pause it. So let's say this couple of seconds is what I wanted to include. Then I could just drag and drop. So you see now this is only 3.7 seconds of this clip. So right here you see this orange line down below. That's essentially the part of this clip that is included in the timeline. So as you start to add clips to it, you can see, hey, I use this little piece here. You know, and you're, you, you're gonna take different pieces from you know the different videos that you have up above. And so I could say, hey, let's add this entire 23 seconds. And then this last one I wanna add. And so you, can, you could essentially, if you wanna add a clip between these two, I could just drag this down here. And so it's gonna put 
this clip in between the, the other two that I already had on screen. And then so once you have clips on your timeline, so I showed you up above how to go and edit a particular clip. So let's say this one, I actually didn't wanna start with the very beginning pieces of it. I wanted to start right here. So there's two things I could do. So I could take the end of the clip like this and then drag it to right here. And then so this is where the, the video is gonna start now. And I took out those couple of other seconds. So I wanna, you know, add additional parts. One of the things you're gonna notice, this was only a couple seconds of a longer clip. If I want to actually go back and add something that was earlier on that clip that I didn't originally pull down here, you know, I can go way, way back on this clip to say to this point if I wanted to. Another thing you can do as you're going through editing is say, hey, you know, if there's a section you don't want, so let's say, I actually only want this beginning piece and what's afterwards I don't want. So if you have the have it lined up here and then you hit control and mouse click, you'll see split clip. And then you can see now it's in a four second clip and a 2.9 second clip. So you see that the yellow part is what's highlighted. If I wanted to get rid of this piece, click on it and then hit delete and then that one is gone. And let's say I wanted to then get rid of this section here. I can split the clip here, delete this one and then just select as I go through, you know, go through and delete different parts out. So there's clearly, you know, I'm either taking a deep breath here, which I tend to forget to breathe sometimes when I'm recording videos. And so what I could do is potentially just take out that entire piece, something like if I just split, oops. So I have to select this part here, control click, split clip. This 0.4 seconds is now gone. So just kind of going through and trimming down to the exact pieces of the videos that you wanted, you know, the same thing here, potentially I may want to take out. Another thing to take a look at is, so you can see right in this part here is essentially the zoom of your clip. So you can zoom in really close as you're looking to kind of cut different pieces of it. If you wanted to zoom out to say, hey, what does this video look like now? You can go the other direction so you can see here hey, I've got four clips, so it's four seconds, 3.9, 2.3 minutes, and another 23 and a half seconds. So depending on how fine-tuned you're trying to make things versus, hey, I just wanna get everything on here and make sure that it's all in the right order, you may wanna zoom out and then zoom in as you're kind of going through stuff with a more fine-tooth comb. And then one of the things, so as you're recording your videos, you don't wanna have the audio too loud where the audio is peaking. You'll see like the red lines if you have the bar showing up while you're recording. And so how you can look at that within, within iMovie is you'll see the audio down here. So you can see right now the video and the audio clip is connected. If you wanted to actually separate those so you could see it better, you can essentially, you can essentially hit control and click on it and then go to detach audio. And so one of the things here is none of this is very high as far as the volume right now. So if I wanted to adjust this, what I ended up doing in, in the video that I published two weeks ago is I think the audio, I think I doubled. So I essentially, most of it was like, say 178 to a little over 200% is what I end up editing all the audio. And so I put that up a little bit, this maybe up 200, this up, you know, essentially the a little bit less because I think it looks a little bit louder already. So maybe like that. And then this one can go up to say here. And so you can see, you know, wanting to make sure that you're uploading something to YouTube and it's loud enough. Cause the thing is, if it's too loud, YouTube essentially turns the volume down. But if it's too quiet, YouTube just leaves it how it, how it is. So if someone's listening to something at a normal volume, your video has a really low volume, they're not gonna hear you very well. So that's just one kind of quick thing as far as going in and editing the audio. Another thing you may wanna do is add music to your video. So a lot of the videos that we do, the tutorials don't have a lot of music. Different places where you can find music to use is the audio library from YouTube. So if you go to youtube.com slash audio library, that's one place where you can get audio clips, so music and sound effects. And we end up using Epidemic Sound. So Epidemic Sound has thousands of songs and a bunch of sound effects. So it's something we find to be really useful to find exactly the type of music that we're looking for, depending on the video, the project that we're working on. But I won't bore you with that, but basically I found a song to add to this clip. So essentially what I can do here is so just, I can drag this either to the timeline or up into the media files like so. And then here is a 3.2 minute song. I can drag this down like so as well. Um, one of the things I may want to, let's say cut the end of it off so it ends at the same time as the video clips do. 
So I could essentially move to right here, control, split clip, and then you can see then I could delete off the, the end of the music. So one of the things here, just looking at this right now, the music is gonna be really loud compared to me talking. So yeah, you're not gonna hear what I'm saying. So depending on what you're looking for in your video, that's clearly not what would make sense for a tutorial video. So I mean, I would probably want something that's, you can hear, but barely. Something along those lines. One of the other kind of bonus tips, so you're gonna see this as we add other images and other clips, is if you want something to kind of fade in and fade out, that you can do that by selecting this little dot right here. So if you pull this in, essentially over, you know, a period of four, let's say, six seconds, the music is going to fade in. So it's a little easier if I turn up the volume, but you'll see. So, so that's one thing you can do if you want to fade in or out music, you can do the same thing with images and stuff that we're gonna show you in a little bit. So that's really the basics of getting the clips into iMovie, figuring out which clips you wanna use, adjusting the audio, adding music. Another thing you may wanna do is say, for our videos, we mention other videos. So if I wanna talk about how to upload videos after you edit this to YouTube, I may wanna show you that video thumbnail. So to do that, I have that already saved somewhere. So YouTube video upload, I'll drag that to my media. And then let's say right here, I wanna mention that video. So I can just drag that down on the timeline. And then one of the things you're gonna see here is you'll notice a few things. As I scroll over it, you see it zoom in like so. And so what you'll do here is select the image. And then what you'll do is, so you, you can see there's a little blue thing over cropping. And what you'll see now is what is called Ken Burns. And so with Ken Burns is essentially a zoom over however long that clip is. So it's gonna start all the way at 100% and then it's only gonna show a, you know, a smaller piece of it. That's not what I want for this image. I want it to be 100% of the image the whole time. And then right here, if you select the video overlay settings, right now cutaway means it goes from this clip and cuts away to this image. That's not really what I was looking for. I wanna go with picture in a picture. So picture in a picture is gonna look something like this. You can move exactly where you want this to be on screen and then also how big do you want it to be. So maybe I want you know this to show up here. I can't quite tell exactly how long it is right now. So this is for four seconds. And the other thing you see these little circles again that I just showed you with the music. So let's say I want this to only be two seconds. The other thing is I don't wanna fade in and fade out. I actually want it to just appear on screen immediately and then disappear immediately as opposed to having that fade. The other thing we may wanna do is add a sound effect of like say a pop when this image comes on screen. So if you wanna add that sound, you could go to the audio library from YouTube, Epidemic Sound or whatever source you may use for sound effects. Again, I found a pop sound earlier and then so I can then just drag that down to this timeline. And so what you're gonna notice here, so I essentially would want this sound to be at the same time as this comes up on screen. So if I just line this up right here, I would want this sound to be right over that. So essentially right there. You know, just like that, you would have, it would make a pop sound as soon as this image appeared. And so you can see there's three different audio layers from me speaking, the music, and sound effects. So this was essentially showing a image over top of the video. Some parts you may wanna do the opposite of that. So for our end screen tutorial video that we put up a couple weeks ago, one of the things we had the end screen and then we have a video playing on top of it. So why don't I show you how we did that? And so say this is for the end screen of the video, so that's gonna be at the very end. Again, I can go to here's the end screen image, drag this to my media, or just drag it directly onto the timeline. So I could put that right here and I want it for let's say four seconds. You're gonna notice the same stupid Ken Burns thing where it's trying to zoom. So let's click on that and then just go to fit. So I don't want any zoom, I just want this on screen the entire time. And so what I could do here is say, if I wanted, let's see, we could play this, hit I, wait a couple seconds, hit out, 
and then pause it. And then I could take this and I could essentially drag, I was actually pretty good, 4.1 seconds, and drag this over top of the end screen. So then I could trim it up so it's the both clips are the same length of time. And then from here, what I wanna do is the same thing we did with picture in a picture. So if you're on the video overlay, right now it's on cutaway, so it's going 100% to the other video. But if I go down to picture in a picture, you're gonna see here, now we have um, if I select the video clip, you can see I can move the video around. I can make it a little bit bigger. And again, you're going to see there's a fade in and fade out that I want. So let's drag those all the way till the end. So you can see, you know, essentially from this clip and then it cuts into the end screen like this. So what we normally do for something like this is like, hey, check out this video. And that's a great way to get people to watch more of your content. And so this is a great way to just create an image that we did within Canva and then have the video playing over top of it. And then while you're, then after you've uploaded the video in the end screens, you could add the play, our YouTube playlist as an example right here. And that's how we would end our video. So the next thing I wanna show you is how to do picture in picture with two videos. So obviously you could record with Screencastify or something that's using your camera for your computer but you don't really have the same amount of options as far as kind of moving the camera around and, and doing things like that as opposed to how we do it where right now I'm recording my screen and on top of it, I have my camera recording me as well and this microphone is going to the camera. So what I could do here is I recorded a short screen share and so I could, let's say, drag that just directly down to the timeline. Here's 40 seconds of a screen share. And then say I wanted to take this clip and have me speaking over top of it. You know, and again, there's there's a bunch of silence at the beginning. Let's split this clip. Oops. And if something you don't like, just hit Command Z and then it, it goes back. So if I want to split the clip right here and then I'll get rid of that and let's say have this piece at the beginning, I may actually want to clean up. Let's say I'll get rid of a little of that. So you can see the default is on cutaway. What I wanna do again is go to picture in a picture. And then here I am, and let's say I move myself down to the corner here. And then this part of the clip, again, you see the, the fade in and fade out that I don't want. And so right here, I can let that play. And it would look something like that. So what happens sometimes, so if you want to cut out part of the clip and you don't want to be super noticeable that your, your hands were here and then your hands are gone. So what you can do is what's called a jump cut. So you make a cut and then you either zoom in or zoom out. And then people won't notice that you're actually splitting, you know, you're stopping one clip and starting a new one. So if I made a mistake in, let's say this section of, you can see where the audio is. And so, so basically if I select this clip, and I select it. If I hit shift, I can select two clips because you have the video and the audio. Now that it's separated, you want to make sure that you're cutting them together. So if I do split clip here, and then let's say I want to do the same thing right here, and then split clip, and then let's delete this middle section. Okay, so we have that now, but let's say there's a little bit of a jump here now, and so what do I want to do? Let's say for this entire section here, let's just break this up a little bit. So split clip. For this section, let's say I wanted to zoom in. So I can select just the video clip. And then what I can do here is click on crop and then crop to fill. So fit, fit it basically takes up the whole screen. Ken Burns will do in a little bit, but crop to fill, essentially what we could do here is zoom in something like that. And then when you're done making a change, click on the blue check button. Okay, and so what's gonna happen now is we go from all the way zoomed out. And then you can see that's essentially how, how that zoom is gonna work. When this clip ends, it's gonna zoom back out. Another thing that we could do here, let me show you how the Ken Burns actually works. And so if I wanted to gradually zoom in now, so if I split this clip, so that's here's 3.8 seconds, then if I went up to the same cropping and go to Ken Burns. So what you're gonna see here is the start and end, but if I click on the, so I wanna start at 100% and then I want to gradually zoom in. So what I would do here is say I want it to be zoomed in even further. 
So, you know, maybe like that. And then again, the blue checkbox. So, so basically over this time, now if we let this play, So if you want to go have the zoom in and then all of a sudden cut back to the part that's zoomed out, you could do like so. Or another thing that you could do is essentially, you'd have to take a look at, hey, how zoomed am I right here? So if I do Ken Burns, you can see it looks approximately like that. So if I split this clip in half now, it's gonna, both clips are gonna have the same effect to it. So what I could do is if I did this, I split this right here. What's gonna happen is gonna look like, it's gonna zoom and it's gonna go back out and it's gonna zoom again. again this is probably the most important tool our but what I can do now is if I wanted to actually zoom back out, I have the second clip selected now, go back to Ken Burns, and then this is actually switch, switches the order. So right now you see the start is zoomed in and the end is zoomed out. And then so if we start here again, so okay, let's say this is the zoom out one, maybe I don't want, but if we just start right here, you're gonna see the gradual in and gradual out. So so that is essentially how that could work. The music's kind of loud, isn't it? Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is how to add text. So if right here in the video I wanted to add text you would essentially select the titles up along the top and you can see that they have a ton of different options some are not something I would ever use in a video like maybe this one so I don't think you're gonna see in one of our videos these little blue and teal bubbles like that we probably go with something a little more along the lines of whatever they would call as standard so you have this standard lower third let's say and and so if you want to see kind of how the animations are you can obviously click and scroll over and it'll show you essentially how the different the different things are gonna be animated. So if we want the standard lower third, we could take this, drag it down on the timeline. So do we want it up for four seconds? Let's say half of that. So we could say, we could only have it, let's say two seconds. Okay, so this is text for two seconds right now. Then if we select the text, let's say we don't want two lines, we just want the top line. So we could delete that one. If we want to change the alignment from, oh, I'm still on the bottom, but if we're up here and I go to center, right align, or left align, you can obviously change that. If you have everything highlighted, so you can also change the font size, so let's go to 80, and then actually change the font. So what do we want to use? Um, and also, if you don't find what you're looking for here, you can go to show fonts, and I think it'll take all the fonts that you have on your computer, so we end up using Work Sans quite a bit and Open Sans. So we could say, yeah, let's do semi bold Work Sans and 72. I think that changed, didn't it? Maybe it didn't. There we go. Okay, it worked that time. But something like that is how you can essentially add text to your videos. A lot of the basics of a video created where we, you know, added the clips, added the audio, added some screen shares, images, music sound effects. So let's say we don't really, we wanna make some adjustments to the color of the video. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So you have this part here, which is, here, let's get the name to pop up for us, the color balance. So if you click on this automatically improve stuff, you know, you can just click on the magic wand right here. You could auto adjust the video clip. Um, maybe it makes it a little bit too bluish for me. Um, and if you don't like whatever you, whatever changes you make, you, know, can, you can always hit this reset button. So let's reset it. If you wanted to match the color of different clips, you could essentially be looking at two different video clips to make sure that, that the color makes sense together. You know, white balance, skin tone balance. I don't really, some of this part I don't really like as much as what we're gonna look at now, which is much more, you know, for me, an easier way to adjust the, co so this is called color correction. So you essentially have th three or a couple of different things that you could adjust. So this right here is essentially the, the color temperature or white balance. And so you can take a look as if we go much cooler or much warmer. So maybe a touch cooler, something like that. This is the saturation. So if you take all the saturation out, you're left with a black and white image or you know, completely saturated, maybe increase the saturation just a touch. So this, there's a handful of things to do that might be a little bit confusing. So there's different 
type different levels of color so you have the shadows the mid-tones you know and the, what's really well lit so if you want to make the bright areas brighter you can drag this out if you want the bright areas darker you can drag this in so let's say this let's make everything a touch brighter if you thought hey the shadows are too dark what you could do is lift up the shadows a little bit so you can see you know along this side of my face that's darker should get a little less dark obviously so if i were to do that and then essentially you have the contrast so if there's very little contrast it's going to look more like this and you can see those two nodes kind of move simultaneously in and out and then if you wanted to add additional contrast you could move them further out so maybe something like that and then again if you want to reset reset all you can go through and change those but that's really the basics of how you could you could edit the colors of your video clips within iMovie. Then one of the fun parts that, well, maybe this one isn't the, the funnest, coolest way that you could be using this, but are green or blue screen. So if you have an explosion, you can use a green or blue screen to have that come up on screen. Or there's all sorts of different effects. We use it more for some of the animation. So if you saw this video that I linked to up above, I created a subscribe animation button using DaVinci Resolve. We'll probably have some tutorials using DaVinci Resolve, which is another free software that you can use for video editing that's much more powerful, but it's much more complex as well. So if the tutorial's ready, I'll link to that up above, but um, it's something worth looking into if you're looking at different video editing softwares. But to show you the animation I created, let's go to add that so subscribe animation with blue screen let's get that in the media file and then let's drag this down onto the timeline so what you're going to see now is you have i'll just let it play once you know it's, it's covering up the entire screen obviously uh, you can see the subscribe button comes up um, you see it get smaller, you hear click, it turns from subscribe to subscribed, and then the subscribe button disappears. But clearly we don't want that covering me up. So if I select the video clip and then go to this, so we don't want cutaway, we want green or blue screen. So you can create something like this with either color and it'll recognize and get rid of it. So now you can see what it looks like if the video plays. So if you want this subscribe button, I'll put a link down below in the description uh, where you can just download this video clip and add it to your videos. If you want to actually try to create that yourself, you know, check out the video that I mentioned earlier. But, I, but that's really about it. So I, I think those are the basics of what you need to learn to create a video or edit a video within iMovie. So if this is like, this is the final version, it has an end screen, it has music, it has a subscribe button, everything you wanted. Then essentially what you do is if you go if you back out into projects it's going to ask you to give it a name so this is our iMovie tutorial and then click ok so iMovie tutorial then if you click on these three dots you can then go to share project so we usually just export it as a file and then add to youtube so i'm not as familiar with going about it this way but if i want to export a file to my computer then it gives you all these different options. So here we have the name, we want video and audio. If you just wanted the audio from something, you can just export the audio, um, then select the quality. So you have high, so you can see basically how big the file is gonna be by looking at it right here. So you have, this is, you know, 529 megabytes. So you can see here on low, the file is only 181 megabytes. You know, I would recommend on high, if you go to best ProRes, you know, I don't know if you're actually recording that high of quality with your phone also, but you're gonna see that this is gonna be a four gigabyte file. I just usually use high and then compression, I usually go with better quality. And that's really all you need. So then if you just click next, you know, change the name of it if you want and to select where you want it to be saved. So if I save this now, and then we can see how long it actually takes. So you see, a it looks kind of weird as it's downloading. So you'll see a couple of files like this, and then this is gonna have, you know, essentially, you know, zero bytes. And so depending on how big the file is, it may take, you know, from a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes or even hours if this were a huge video file. 
Okay, so then you'll see up along the top, you'll see that says uh, share successful, exporting iMovie tutorial was successful. And then so obviously you go to whatever the folder was that you had to save that, and you'll see right here iMovie tutorial, and you know, that is essentially the video we created. Okay, so that's the basics of how to edit videos for YouTube using iMovie. Now that you have your exported video, if you want to learn the best practices for uploading your video to YouTube, check out this video right here. If you want to learn about other video editing softwares, here's our DaVinci Resolve tutorial below. Hope to see you in those in future videos. Bye-bye.